Hi everybody, this is Brendan Coyle and this is our video on how to edit a voiceover in Pro Tools. This video will deal with some advanced editing techniques in Pro Tools. Um, if you're uncertain on the basics of Pro Tools, um, we have a great resource here at Such a Voice. If you just go to suchavoice.com slash members, if you're a, a Such a Voice member or Such a Voice client, you can log into that area. Let me take you there right now. Go to www.suchavoice.com slash members. And your username is uh, whatever email you use to sign up with Such a Voice. I'm just going to use our default right now. And your password will be whatever password you use to sign up with um, Such a Voice as well. And this is what your member, your members only area looks like. Um, you have a, a series of tabs here on the left hand side. The tab that you want is the fifth one up from the bottom. It's the resources tab. Click on that. And then right in the middle here you can just go right to recording manuals. And if you are using Pro Tools, um, depending on what version you're using, Pro Tools 7 is our, our oldest uh, manual uh, version. Uh, so if you're using 7, click on that. But if you're using Pro Tools 8, Pro Tools 9, or even Pro Tools 10, you can just download the Pro Tools version 8 manual and just click here to download the manual. And then I'll, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great guide to help you get set up in Pro Tools, show you some of the basics, how to do some basic recording, how to route the signal through your Mbox. If you're using an Mbox or an Mbox Mini or whatever interface you're using, I'll show you how to do that. And this video won't cover that, that stuff right now. Um, we're just going to focus on editing right now. So let me just go ahead and minimize that. So if you need those basics, if you don't really understand the basics of Pro Tools, be sure to go to the, that website. And I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the Pro Tools application. I'm doing this all on a Mac, um, and there shouldn't be a lot of differences between you know the, what it looks like on a Mac and what it looks like on a PC. Um, everything is is pretty similar on on both uh, computers. So don't let if it looks a little different, don't let it throw you. All the buttons are pretty much the same. And I'm going to create a blank session. I have I have a voiceover gig I have to do, uh, so I'm going to do it in my Pro Tools, and it's for Goldfish. When you open a new session, Pro Tools wants you to, to uh, name it right away. So uh, I like to name, I like to file manage by date. And today's date is May 25th, 2012. So I'm just going to 2-25-12. My client is going to be Goldfish Crackers. I can't emphasize enough how important file management is. Um, when you create a session, I'll show you how what Pro Tools generates and just how to keep that organized, but always keep it organized. And I'm going to call it May 25th, 2012 Goldfish. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Again, on a PC, you should have a similar column like this where there's a desktop. I'm just going to save it on the desktop right now and hit save. And it's going to generate a, the, a Pro Tools session for me. And the first thing it opens up is the edit window. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a track in the edit window. And I go up to track, I go down to new, and then I get this pop-up window that says create one mono audio track. And that's what you're going to do anytime you're recording a voiceover. Make sure you're never recording a stereo uh, track and make sure it's always an audio track. Hit create, and there we go, it generates a track for me. Just to let you know, uh, there's two main windows that Pro Tools uses. The edit window is the one that you're going to be using mostly. The other window, if you go up to Windows and you go down to Mix, there's a Mix window. And just open up that view a little bit. And the Mix window, if you have a, a, a 10 tracks, you're going to get 10, you know, you're going to get a lot of a, a 10 other faders here, and you can have a sends and a insert. Uh, section where you can, you know, if you want to send it off to an auxiliary effect or whatever, but we're not going to get into that at all. That's way outside the scope of what you'll need to do for the post production on your voiceover uh, auditions or your, your voiceover jobs. 
But just to let you know, this does exist, the mix window. But we're going to be mostly using the edit window. The first thing I like to do is I like to see the tracks big. I like to just make sure I have a, a good view on everything that I'm looking at. So I'm just going to go to, I'm going to make this larger. And the way I can do that is this little ruler right here. It looks like this little bar. It looks like a ruler. I just click on that and I'm just going to make it extreme. You can make it large or dumbbell. I'm going to make it extreme. Click, expand that a little bit so I can see the entire edit window. The other thing you can do is you can just hover your mouse over the the bottom of that ruler and just you know make it as big as you want because we're only dealing with one track uh, we can just make it really big so let me go up and bring up the script I want to use and it's this is my script the goldfish script let me just get that out of the way for right now I have my inputs and my outputs set up the way I want to have them set up uh, again if you have any questions about that be sure to go to the Pro Tools manual in the members only area at subjectvoice.com slash members. Click the resources tab, click on the manual. And I'm working out, I'm actually working out Pro Tools 9, but if, if you're working out Pro Tools 9, you can download the manual for Pro Tools 8. It looks very similar to Pro Tools 9. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to arm my track. I have my signal routed the way I want it to be routed. And I am getting, you can see my meter jumping there. So as you, as you can see, I am getting a level. Check, 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 check. And sometimes when I'm, when I'm setting the gain, I will even perform the script just to see, just to make sure. And I'm going to perform it as loud as I'm going to do it when I actually record. Um, if I clip at all, then I know I have to turn my gain down a little bit. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients, zero grams trans fat no artificial preservatives and there's one for every taste I think the levels are good that's gonna work for me I ha I'm not clipping I'm bouncing between halfway up and three-quarters of the way up in the meter and that's fine as long as I don't clip and I'll show you a clip right now I'll just clap my hands really loud and you see the red dot at the top here it means I clipped and that can really distort the sound that you're putting into Pro Tools so just make sure when you're setting gain don't clip okay now that I have my track armed I'm going to go up here and arm the session like you would. It's a lot like an old tape recorder when you had to press record and play at the same time. Uh, same exact thing. I'm going to record enable the session. And as soon as I hit play here, I'll be, ro I'll be rolling. I'll be recording. And you'll notice up here, you can start seeing this pink little line going across. It means I'm recording. And at this point, you know, I'm not, just so you know, I'm not recording in an acoustically treated environment. In order to do this video, I, I'm doing it in front of the computer, kind of just in a room, but this video is just for, you know, education on how to edit in Pro Tools. I'm not doing this for an actual gig. So um, when, you, when you do hit record and you start recording, this is the time you can take to walk into your booth. I usually set my microphone away from my computer, away from my hard drives, in a really quiet booth. And you just let it roll. And what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record the script I have a couple of times. I'm going to get a couple of, a couple of takes on this, and then uh, from those takes, let me do let me do at least two takes or three takes even. Uh, I'm going to edit together um, the the perfect take, and you might also notice when I when I'm reading through this, uh, I might even repeat a few sentences. Uh, if if you repeat a phrase or a sentence that you botch, you can just say it again and then just edit you know, get rid of the one that you botched and edit in the one that you liked. So, here we go. Let me perform this a couple times and see how I do. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients, zero grams trans fat, no artificial, no artificial preservatives, and there's one for every taste because everyone's different and that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. I'm going to take that again. These goldfish crackers, these goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients, zero grams trans fat, no artificial preservatives, no artificial preservatives, no artificial preservatives, and there's one for every taste, because everyone's different, and that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. Very cool. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit stop. And I'm going to take this track out of record ready. 
And let me just say one other thing. You know, as a voiceover talent, you want to make sure that you don't depend too much on the technology to uh, to fix it in post too much, so to speak. As a voiceover talent, the ideal is to be able to nail a, a you know a twenty second script like this from beginning to end by your second take and and not and not botch it too much. I do I do I did botch it myself and I did that I did that for the benefit of the video. No, I botched it because I just botched it. But again, just making sure that you get through a script and you have a pretty good performance at least by the second take. Um, and that's especially two in, in two situations. Number one, if you're doing a long form narration like an audio book and you're going into your booth and you're just going to record, you know, 20 minutes at a time, you don't want to go back. You may not want to go back and just do all that editing, editing out all the places where you botched. Um, you know, so that that can be that can be time consuming, consuming on the editing side. But if you like to do post production, that's fine. But the more important situation is when you actually go into a studio with a client. Uh, if the ad exec is there and the the clients are there and and the producers there. You know, they don't want you to botch botch your lines too much. You know, you want to be able to sure you can you you can nail it a couple of times for them, and then they're going to give you feedback. They're going to say, okay, now do it completely different. And as a voiceover talent, you need to absorb that direction and give it back the way they ask. That's a key factor in voiceover technique. Um, but when you're doing things like this at home, you're doing little twenty second spots, and you're doing them mostly from the comfort of your home studio. Yeah, you can do a couple of takes, and then you can edit together the best take. So let's begin. The first thing I want to bring your attention to are your main editing tools. And those are right up here in the top left hand corner. You have your trim tool. And this tool allows you, if you put it on the edge of, of a region, just allows you to trim the region back or trim the region forward and just make minor trims on the region. The second tool is the selector tool. If I click that, the selector tool allows me to put the cursor anywhere I want on the region or the play you can also think of it as the playback head these goldfish and you might you know I'm just putting that wherever I it's like dropping a needle on the record you know it's wherever I want to start playing it from the selector tool also allows you to click and drag and highlight parts of the region which will be very important as we start to edit the third tool is the grabber tool and it looks like the hand it's over here on the left and the grabber tool basically allows you to move the region from left to right. And as we're editing and we're setting our pace between phrases and sentences, that's going to become very important. Now, instead of having to go up here every time I want to trim something, then go back up here and every time I want to select something, then going back up here every time I want to grab, Pro Tools has this great thing called the Smart Tool. It's that little gray bar across the top that allows you to select all three of these tools at once. And depending where you put your cursor on the region, the, the appropriate tool will show up. For example, if I go to the edge of this region, my trim tool will, will engage. If I go more towards the center, it'll be my selector tool. And if I go down to the bottom of the region, it'll be my grabber tool. So it's just great to have all those tools just come you know up here when you need them. I really encourage you to use your, your smart tool uh, when, when, when editing. I think another really important uh, thing to consider when you're starting to edit in Pro Tools is quick keys or your shortcut keys on your computer keyboard. I will mouse around with my, uh, I'll use the mouse a lot with my right hand, but I'll do, be doing a lot of other functions with my left hand on the computer keyboard. The first thing you want to make sure that you have engaged is this A through Z button up here. Um, and basically, just make sure it's yellow and it, it allows you to use your computer keyboard as uh, shortcuts in Pro Tools. And two of the most important keys, I think, well, there's a couple of important ones, but here's two of them. Um, the T key on your keyboard, T for Tom, and your R key, R for Red. Uh, if you hit your T key, it zooms in, so you can make really surgical edits. That's going to be really important. You know, it's really hard to edit between these two phrases back here, but if I zoom in, aha, uh -huh, now it becomes bigger, and I can really get in there and take out my breath. And if I press R, it lets me zoom out. So zooming in, zooming out, and just putting your cursor or your smart tool anywhere you want, very important. Another really important keyboard function is your space bar. The space bar is good to play and to stop. So if I put my cursor here and then hit my space bar, it, allows, it starts playing, put my cursor here, 
you can just say it again and then just hit my space bar and it starts playing and hit the space bar again to stop. You can just say it again and and then put my selector tool, hit space bar, let it play. You can just say it again and then just hit space bar to stop. Put my selector tool over here, let me hear this sentence selector space bar to play. Everyone's different. And that's only natural space bar to stop. So I, I just get used to having my, my thumb on my space bar and my my index finger and my middle finger on the T and the R key. That's kind of the position I'm always in when I'm editing. Just getting in, getting out, and selecting what I need to select. It's a lot easier than, you know, putting your selector here. I want to hear the beginning of this phrase, going up here, hitting you can play. Again, you can do that too. Edit. And hit stop, select here, hit play. Because everyone's different. Hit stop. It's just too much movement for my mouse. It's just so much easier for me to hit the space bar. No artificial preserve. Stop. Play. Grams trans Stop. Play. Taste. So that's going to be really important. With that said, let's go ahead and begin our edit. And so let me select this whole region with my grabber tool. I'm just going to click it once. It'll highlight the whole thing. And then I'm going to hit T, 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 T. And that, that starts zooming in right at the beginning of the region. I've selected. I've highlighted. You know, it's up here. You can start seeing this. So all this stuff at the beginning was all, all the things I was saying as it was recording, as explained to you during the video. I know my first take doesn't really start till about here. These goldfish crackers are... All this stuff was just stuff I was, I was saying while I was recording the video. So I want to get rid of that. I don't need it. And this might be the, the sound that you make when you're walking into your booth. This might be a lot of dead air as you're walking into your booth and you didn't actually start to take till here. So These goldfish crackers are not... So all I want to do is I'm going to, with my selector tool engaged, I don't want to cut into the word. Let me zoom in a bit. My words, my word starts right These there. Goldfish. So let me just go ahead and highlight all this. Make a highlight. Hit the R key. R R R R. And what I can do is I can hold down my Shift key on my computer keyboard, and I can click all the way to the end. And look at that. It it it, it highlights all all the stuff to the left. And I'm just going to hit delete on my computer keyboard. Bam. And there's still a little bit over here on the side. Let me just go ahead, zoom in, TTT, grab our tool, highlight it, hit delete. RRR to zoom back out. So here are my takes. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat, no artificial no artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different, and that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. I'm going to take that again. So I have two takes. That's the end of my first take, and this is the beginning of my second take. And you can, you know, as you're working, you really have to start seeing words in a whole new way. Start seeing these these waveforms as your phrases and sentences. And I know right away that this is the beginning of my second take. And there's one of two things you can do um, as you go forward, as you, as you start, you know, if you want to mark up your takes, there's a great thing you can use up here. It's called the markers. It says right up here, it's above the track, it says markers, and there's a little plus sign over here. If you hit that, it brings up this pop-up window. And you can name the marker anything you want. I'm going to name the first one, take one. Hit OK, and then it gives me this little, little yellow diamond at the top of, of my region here, at the top of my track, and I can put that anywhere I want, but I'm going to put it on take one, of course. And then I'm going to make another marker. I'm going to call that take two. And I'm going to put that right at the beginning of take two. So you can mark things up. If you listen back in real time, you can mark up your takes so you know what you're going to use right away. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients, zero grams trans fat. So if I like no that artificial, sentence, I'm going to say good No sentence. artificial preservatives. And there's one for every t So if I like this sentence, zero grams trans fat. That's one way you can start marking up your takes. Oh, I like this sentence. I know I want to have that this sentence in my final edit. I'm going to take that again. Snack. That's the snack that smiles back. Maybe I like this tag. Coldfish. The snack that smiles back. Maybe I'll just want to mark that as good tag. 
And as a producer, this is what this is how I would do it if I had a voiceover talent in the booth. If I if I have someone in the booth recording, I can drop these markers in as they perform, and I can you know I, th then I know what I'm going to use on their final on their on the final edit of their performance. So that's one way of of marking up what you're going to do, setting out a game plan for yourself. And the other thing you can do, and one thing I like to do, let me just get rid of these. I'm just going to drag them off delete them is I might just separate these two takes uh, apart from each other right away these goldfish crackers so that's the beginning of take two this is take one let me just go ahead and make a little little highlight on all this dead space in the middle zoom in with TTT hit the delete RRR to zoom out and with my grabber tool I'm just separate these two these two takes R, R, R to zoom out of it. So now I know I have two takes right away. And what I like to do is I like to create what I call a comp track. I like to keep all my raw audio on one track and then I'm going to do my master edit on a second track. So let me go up and select track, new, one mono audio track, and create. That's going to create another track. And let me just shrink this track up a little bit and make this track a little bigger. I'm going to be working with both of these. I'm going to listen back to both takes and I'm going to I can compare which take I like or which parts of the take I like and drop it down here into into this track. So let's go ahead and listen to the first sentence on each take to see which one started the best. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with real ingredient. These goldfish crackers I botched the first sentence of the second take already, so let me just go ahead with the trim tool, just trim it back, and then I'm going to use that. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. I just like that second take a little bit better. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. So let me just go ahead and grab this. I'm just going to highlight. Let me zoom in so I make sure I don't clip the word out. There's, a, there's dead space right there. Let me just highlight it. Highlight a bit of it, hold down the shift key with my selector tool to the left of, of the region I wanna, the part of the region I want to copy. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna click. Up here, I'm gonna go to edit, copy, and then I'm gonna put my cursor on the second track. And then I'm gonna go up here to edit, paste. And right away, it gives me copy of that track. But now that I'm working with two tracks, be aware that they will play back at the same time. And that will that will sound really funny. These goldfish, goldfish crackers, crackers, crackers are, are natural. natural. It sounds like an echo, but you really what you're doing is you're hearing both tracks. So since I'm just pulling the parts down that I want to work with first, I'm just going to go ahead and mute this track. It'll turn this track off so I just hear this track. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with real ingredients. The other thing you can do is you could also just solo this track. Solo and mute. Uh, the reason why you would solo a track is if you were working with a rock band in a studio and you were working with 20 tracks and you just want to solo the vocalist, hitting solo mutes all other tracks. And if you were working with a band and you wanted to mute the vocalist, you would just hit mute and that would it would play all the other tracks while mute, muting um, while muting the vocalist, say. That's the difference between those two buttons. But for right now, let me just go ahead and mute my comp track. And then I'm going to zoom out again, R, R, R. So we have our first sentence. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial, no artificial preservatives. Let me hear that over in this take, take two. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. No artificial preservatives. No artificial preservatives. So I like this, again, I like take two a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the, the takes I like. Zoom in. Just make sure I, I have it clean. And yes, I can go to edit. I can go to copy. But an easier thing to do is use the quick keys. And the quick keys on a Mac and on a PC are, are shown over to the left here. And I know it's, uh, it's command C to copy. So if I were just to go ahead highlight this on my computer keyboard, hit Command-C, go down to this track I want to copy it to, 
and to paste something to a track is Command V. So I'm not going to do it up here. I'm just going to hit it on my keyboard. Command V. Bam. There we go. I'm going to use those quick keys from now on. I won't be going up to edit and to copy and paste down to my comp track. Let me zoom out again. R R R. And pick up where we left off. No artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste. Because everyone's different. And that's only natural. That has a nice smile in there. Not, not too bad. And there's one for every taste. Because everyone's different. And that's only natural. Goldfish. The snack that smiles back. Goldfish. The snack that So let me go ahead and use that, that bit from from my second take. And there's one for every taste. So I'm keeping that. Now, I already used this part from my second take. And the great thing about non-linear editing is that the rest, if I'm using just this part of the take down here, then this part of the take, the part that was connected to it, is already down here, it's just invisible in a way. So if I take my engage my trim tool, I'll just expand this out. And there we go. Because everyone's different, and that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. Let me hear the tag of my, my first take here. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. See, I actually like the tag from my from my first take. So let me go ahead in there. Goldfish, the snack. Highlight it. Command C. R, R, R to zoom out. Put my selector down there. Command V. Great. So I have all the parts I want to use for my, my master edit. So I'm pretty much done with my raw, my raw audio. This was my raw audio up here. These were my takes. Got what I wanted. Let me go ahead and mute this track now. I won't be using it anymore. And let me unmute this track. Now let me shrink this top track a little bit. I'm going to put my I'm going to put my cursor over the bottom of that ruler and just pull it up. And we'll put the cursor over the bottom of the ruler in the second track here. Pull that down. And let's start editing. So I'm put my selector tool at the beginning. T T T. Zoom in a bit and start right from the top. Space bar to play. These goldfish. So right away I can hear a breath. And you know sometimes you may not always have to pull the breaths out of your out of the performances you send to clients. Once you get better at this, you might want to do that for them. And especially if you want to send a, a perfect take if you're editing anyways, you can do that. And really, what we're talking about is eliminating the breaths and 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 uh, putting these phrases together in a way that still sounds natural. And you have to do that by ear. There's no real science to it. This is an art. So. When you do eliminate breaths or you eliminate space between phrases, just be aware of your rhythm. The, the human ear knows when, when, when there's something wrong with human speech. It's, it's a very sensitive thing. You'll know right away if you've rushed a phrase or if there's too much space between two phrases. So those are things to keep in mind as we go forward. So let me zoom right in. I'm going to put my selector tool right at the beginning of the word. These go And the These word really starts right here, right? And that's my breath. So let me go in. And when I do make a cut, you might notice these, these little bumps in here, these little fragments of sound that Pro Tools picked up. They're not too bad right here, but right here. When you do make a cut, try to find a, a space that's completely dead, a complete flat line. Don't, don't edit on one of these bumps. Don't edit on a sound, no matter how tiny it is. Only because sometimes when you do an edit, you do a clip on a sound, um, you can get a digital clip in your final edit. If you stick to the flat lines, you cut into the flat lines to begin your edit, that's best. Um, you, you should be fine in not getting any digital clipping. Put my selector tool, I've, sl I've highlighted some of it. I want to delete the rest of this. I'm going to put my selector tool to the left, hold down shift, Click with my mouse, just highlights the rest, and let me hit delete on my keyboard. Bam, gone. Let me hear what that sounds like. These goldfish. That's a pretty clean edit. Always err on the side of of giving more space around a word. A lot of people try to get right into a word, 
and they'll try to, you know, they'll, they'll cut into the word sometimes, and that's that is an unforgivable thing. These cool, not too bad, but err on the side of giving a little space to a word. And we're talking, we're talking. This space is about a couple of. This is 32 milliseconds. I mean, it's it's almost inaudible to the human ear. But if you cut into a word, these cool, you can hear it. You'll be able to hear that. You know. He's cool. He's cool. Yeah, that's, and you can hear the little tick. He's cool. No, that's no good. So with my trim tool, even though I cut into that, it's no problem. I can just pull it out again. Or better yet, if I've if I've done something, if I've eliminated something that I didn't want to eliminate, a great great quick key for both PC and Mac, and not just Pro Tools, but a lot of different applications, is on a Mac it's Command Z. And on a PC, it's Control Z. If you hit hold down Command and hit Z, 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 it just undoes every the last uh, few operations I did in Pro Tools. I think you it allows you to undo the last 13 operations you do in Pro Tools. And there are preferences in Pro Tools that allow you to change that. You can you can go up to 30. So if I, for example, if I make a lot of deletes in here that I'm like, oh no, I didn't want to do all those deletes. Command Z, just hold down Command Z Z Z, and it undoes it for me. So that's that's your eraser for any mistakes you made. It's very forgiving. Not to mention, if you do make deletes that you didn't want to make, let me make some more deletes here. Delete, delete, delete. I'm like, oh, I didn't want to make all those deletes. As I said before, this region, even though you delete parts of the region, those parts are still there in a way. All I have to do is go to my trim tool, pull it right back out, and there you go. It's not like deleting with, it's not like editing with tape back in the old days. If you edit with tape and you cut it away, it hit the floor and it was gone. Not with digital editing. It's very forgiving, so there you are. Let me just make sure I, have, I still have a good edit at the beginning. I do. I've cut on a, on a, on a dead space. I've not cut on a, on a bump. Selection tool, I'm gonna zoom out, R R R. Let me go ahead and play. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with real ingredients. So there's no breath in here, but there was a long pause. I bet I can pull these two phrases together to make it sound more like one sentence. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with I bet I can edit a, the space out a little bit and, and just just make this this the pacing a little bit faster. So let me go right in. Let me my selector tool. Let me go in between these two phrases. Hit T T T T to zoom in. Zoom right in. There's a lot of dead space here. Let me just highlight with my selector tool. Hit delete on my keyboard. R to zoom out. This is where the trim tool comes in handy. I can just trim up this. This is a lot of dead space. I do see some sound. I want to see what I don't want to cut into the sound. There's some dead space right there. Delete it. Let me listen now to make sure I did not cut into the word. Goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with that sounds clean to me. The, the sound of my voice stopped. Natural. And that's important. I mean, I, I can't emphasize that enough that, you know, it's great with digital editing audio. There's these visual cues, these waveforms, but don't rely on your eyes. Never, never, never rely on your eyes. Always rely on your ears. Play Those are natural. Always, always play it back. Always test, test your edit with your ears. Don't, don't, you know, these visual cues are, they're, they're great, but don't want to edit based on visual cues. And now let me put these, pull these sentences together with my grabber tool. You can see I engage my grabber tool and pull this region closer. Select your tool from the beginning. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with really... It's a little fast. The pace was a little fast. I do need a little space after these all. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with real ingredients. Nice. And there's some my S is right here. I can I can just I can just go ahead and trim up a little bit. And I, I, I get a little O C D when I when I get editing. You know, I start trimming away things that things that I don't necessarily need to. I just like to make sure everything's nice and clean. Baked with real ingredients. And it still sounds good, so that's great. Let's let's inch the rest of this these next couple of phrases up with my grabber tool. Now I have to marry marry this this section in with this. Let's, let's go in, selection tool, press RRR, select selection tool, press RRRRRR, there's some dead space right there, 
It's very, very surgical editing here. Let me pull it up. Let me see what it sounds like. Baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat. And that's good. That's a good pace. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial. It's a lot of space right there. When I'm performing, uh, you know, I know some dynamite voiceover talent. They they nail a spot from beginning to end. No no pace, no spaces. They just do it great, and that's the ideal. That's really what you want to shoot for. When I'm doing a voiceover, I tend to give myself a little room between my phrases, just so I can nail each phrase perfectly the way I want it, and then I can just edit them together, inch them together. Never pull phrases together just for the sake of pulling phrases together or, 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 you know, make sure that if you're adjusting your editing, you're adjusting your timing between phrases, that, you, that has a purpose and that it sounds natural. Underline, underline, bold. Make sure it always sounds natural. Just don't edit things together just for the sake of editing them together. So let me go in here. I want to, first of all, I want to just separate these two regions. I'm just going to do a quick, quick eyeball there. It's fat. There's a dead space right there. I like this. Trans, trans fat. That's clean. I did not cut into the word. So let me pull up this phrase now. Let's see how those sound, how those sound together. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preserve. A little fast. Let me grab my, with my grabber tool at the bottom. Let me pull it out a little bit. Reset that timing. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. That's better. Let's hear it from the top. Let me hear it all in context. These goldfish crackers are natural. Baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. No artificial... Oh, so I did this line a couple of times, it sounds like. Let me, let me audition each one of these to see which one I'm actually going to use. No artificial preservatives. No yeah, that word preservatives really was a tongue twister for me, wasn't it? I kind of botched that. No artificial preservatives. No artificial preservatives. No artificial preservatives. Ah, see, the last one was the cleanest one. So I know right away that I don't need these. I, I, I took the sentence, took it again, and then I nailed on the third one, you know. And you can do that in take, you know. If you're going to edit edit yourself, that's fine. Do a, do a phrase that you're having trouble with a couple of times, you know. So I'm just going to highlight those two takes I did. Hit delete. In my grabber tool, I'm going to pull up the actual sentence I'm going to use. Nope. And there's that little breath right there. Really start seeing, really start seeing these waveforms for words and breaths. Yeah, let me go ahead, zoom right in. T T T. There's some dead space right there. So, and let me show you another quick key right now. So what I could do is I can select the dead space. I'm going to cut on. I can go over here to the left because I want to. I want to delete everything to the left of that. Hold down Shift click with my mouse and it'll highlight it and I can delete it. That's one way you can do that. Let me hit Command Z to undo what I just did to show you another way. If I do put my cursor in a place where I want to delete, you can press the A key on your computer keyboard and that will automatically delete everything in that region to the left. Bam! Press A and it deletes. A does have a partner button. Let me control command Z that to undo that. If I want, say I want to delete everything to the right of where I put my cursor, you can also press S. And I'll delete everything to my right. Obviously, I don't want to do that. That was my take, so let me command Z that and get that back. But I will command A that breath I have in there. Boom, take it away. Again, quick keys are just great. Instead of having to, you know, it's just one of those things, the more you practice it, um, the faster you, you will become an editor in Pro Tools. And, uh, and it's like an instrument. It's muscle memory. Once you've done it a couple times, uh, it, you'll just get it into your hand. It'll, it'll become second nature. So I made that edit. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. Now obviously, that's a big gap in between those two phrases. That's, not, that's a lot of advertising dead air they don't want. So let me go ahead and inch that, see what that sounds like. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial... A little fast for me, I think. A little fast. Grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. And there's one for every... I like that Grams place. trans fat. No artificial preservatives. And there's one... Okay. I like that pace. Now let's take a look at the next sentence here. And there's one for every taste. Because everyone's... Okay, i got to get rid of this in here. You can hear that, that breath I made. And there... Just go ahead... 
what you can do is you can just go ahead, if you know this is all dead space, do a quick quick highlight and delete, and then you can clean up, you can trim off the fat at the end of your regions and marry them together after that. S. And that S is fine, I'm fine with that. Preservatives. That's F fine. If I cut too close to it, you can hear that my S will be cut off. Preservatives. You know? Preservatives. That's no good. Command Z that. But that Preservatives. S. That's, that's clean. Pull this one up. Let me get oh, get some of this stuff away from the word. Hit my word really starts. And there's so easy, you know. Let me get in there and trim off the rest of this word. Or for now on, maybe I will not highlight it, but I know I'm going to trim everything off to the left. I'm just going to hit A on my computer keyboard. Then R R R R R. Zoom out. Pull it up together a little bit. No artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste. Yeah, and I'm just eyeballing this, but, you know, it, it sounds really good. You'll know when something... And, and the other thing you can do in, in Pro Tools, be aware, is, like, if you pull over too far, you can actually overlap regions on one another. Of course, that won't sound good. No artificial preservatives. And there's one for no, every... No, that doesn't sound good, you know? So you just have to have fun with it. Just eyeball it, you know? No artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste. Because everyone's different. I bet I can make this and this sound like they're part of the same sentence. There's a bit of a pause in there that I, I don't want. Let me see if I can do that. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. Let me, let me go in there. Let me go in. Let me just... Let's go ahead. I see a little dead spot there, and a dead spot there. Delete, and we pull them up together a little bit. Let's see if I can make, make this commercial move along a little bit better. I put a lot of pauses in there. Preservatives. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. Uh, not too bad. I, maybe a little too fast. Let me just inch it out. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. And that's only natural. Yeah, I like that. Because everyone's different. And that's only natural. I might actually want more space between those those two phrases, just to give a little thought. You know, when you let a, a line hang, and you, you just give a little space, it, it, it it's like the payoff, you know? Because everyone's different. And that's only natural, you know, as opposed to everyone's different, and that's only natural. Because everyone's different, and that's only natural. Let me slow, slow it up a little bit. Make the So let me go in there. Let me see here. Let me zoom in, get a dead spot right there. Delete that. Let me move it out a little bit. Let me just see what that sounds like. Taste. Because everyone's different, and that's only natural. And, oh, I chopped off a little bit. Let me just, with my trim tool, I'm going to pull that out a little bit. And that's only natural. I'm hearing a little clip. Even though it looks dead, there's a little clip. I can hear a little sonic. I, I, I cut off the word, my natural, my L. And that's only natural. And that sounds good to me. Let me just zoom in, make sure that I, and I did, I did cut on a, on a flat line. So that's good. Good. Clean edit. So this was the tag from take one that I wanted to use, actually. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. And I had a smile in there, which is appropriate. So let me go in. This is the breath. So let me go in, put my cursor at the beginning of the word. Goldfish. It, it's so easy to, to edit around words that start with consonants, because it's always a, you know, goldfish or, or cake or whatever, you know, you have this... You have a definite beginning of a word uh, as opposed to an A like uh, all these people or E for everybody. You yeah. go in there, there's some dead space. I'm going to press A on my computer keyboard. Get rid of everything to the left of it. And pull it up a little bit. And that's only natural. Goldfish. This I think that'd be a little quicker. Everyone's different. And that's only natural. Goldfish. Yeah. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. Let me just let me just go ahead and, and try to pull these again together a little bit more. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. I like that. A much quicker tag. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. And there's my K. There's back. Everything after the K I can get rid of. It says trimming the fat, so I'm going to put my cursor there, and I want to eliminate everything to the right of that K, so I'm going to press S on my computer keyboard. Boom, gone. Let's hear my entire edit now. What I can do is I just highlight the last region with my grabber tool, go up here, hold down the Shift key on my computer keyboard, 
click on the on that the first region and it just highlights everything in the middle. And I'm gonna press space, space bar to play. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat, no artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. And that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. Not too these bad. Gold not too bad. I want to put a little bit more of a pause in between these two phrases. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial... I feel like that's a little quick. I feel like that's a little quick. I want to put more of a space between these two regions. Now, if I just highlight this region with my grabber tool and I pull it over, well, now I've messed up that region. Preservatives. We taste. You know? So let me Command Z that, undo that. So I want to move... I want to move all these regions together with this region, just to, just to pace this out a little bit more. But I don't want to mess up the pacing of my of my other edits. So what I need to do is I need to highlight this this region, the one I want to move. I'm gonna put my grabber tool over the last region. Hold down Shift on my computer keyboard. Click the mouse. Now I'm gonna highlight all the regions. Now when I move this region to to adjust this pace. It moves all these regions as one unit. It doesn't mess up the, the, the spacing between any of my other edits. So just remember, if you want to move multiple regions at once, you must highlight them all together. And it'll become one thing. So let me go ahead. I put a little bit more space. Let me, let me hear it. Baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. Space it out a little bit more. Highlight that one. Hold down shift. Click on that one. Let me hear it right from the top again. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat, no artificial preservative. A little bit too much space. Let me just adjust that. And again, you know, this is just fun. This is just you, you gotta you gotta you gotta play with this to. You just have to play with your pacing, and, and the more you play with it, the better your ears are going to get in tune with it, These and the better you'll get with the software. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat, no artificial preserve. I still want more space. I'm going to get really nitpicky, and that's okay. That's what using the software is all about. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat. No artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. And that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. Nice. And I might just want to pace my, my tagline out a little bit more. I just want to pace this out a little bit more. And that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. Cool. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with, I'm happy with this final edit. I'm not hearing any clipping in between any other words. So what I want to do is I want to bounce this audio out of Pro Tools so I can send it to my client. I wouldn't send my client an entire Pro Tools session saying, here, I edited this for you, you know. Um, they, just want an, they just want an audio file, like a WAV or an MP3. We'll, we'll, we'll manipulate it through Pro Tools. We'll record it and manipulate it in Pro Tools, but we really want to uh, just give them a final product. Um, I already have this track muted, so when, whenever you mute a track and you bounce out audio, it will not bounce out the audio from the muted track. It will only bounce out the audio from the tracks that are unmuted, or solo even. So we're going to keep that track muted. In order to bounce out my, my edited final product, I'm going to highlight my first region with my grabber tool. I'm going to go to the end, to the last region, hold down shift, Click, and I'm going to highlight all, all the, I want to select all the audio I want to bounce out. So then I'm going to go up to File, Bounce. In Pro Tools, it's called Bouncing Out. Um, but in other, in other platforms, uh, another platform that some Such A Voice students use is Audacity, they call it Exporting. So if you ever hear someone say export the audio or bounce out the audio, uh, those terms are kind of interchangeable because different software uh, use different terms for them, even though it's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go up to File, Bounce to, Disk. You get a pop-up window. 
Your bounce source is out one and two stereo, and that's fine. That's the default. That should be the default for your output. It's it's the default output on my tracks, out one, two. And for more information on that, just be sure to go to the Pro Tools manual. Your client might want this as a wave. They might want it as an MP3. Um, a wave is, you know, it's a, it's a lossless file type. It's a better file type. Um, and it, where as an MP3 is a loss a lossy file type, but most all audio files nowadays are are MP3. It's a very common file type. But I'm going to bounce it out in Wave. But just check with your client on how they want it delivered. You can do both ways with Pro Tools. I'm going to bounce this out, and as as far as the format, I'm going to go Mono Sun because I'm just going to bounce out one mono track. If I had a mono track and underneath I had a, a stereo track of music and I want multiple tracks summed together, then I would select interleave. And basically that would interleave multiple tracks together. But for right now, I'm going to go mono summed. My bit depth is going to be 16 bit. My sample rate is going to be 44.1K, very common. When I hit bounce, the next window you're going to get is, is this window. And it's basically asking, what do you want to call it? and where do you want to save it? And a PC it should look very similar. For right now, I'm going in this column, I'm going to select my desktop. And I'm going to I'm going to name it the same thing I, I named the actual Pro Tool session. I'm going to call it uh, May 25th, 2012, 5-25-12, Goldfish. And I could even call it Goldfish for client if I wanted to or whatever. Whatever you want to call it. However, you're going to set up your file management system. Now, when I hit save, Pro Tools bounces audio out in real time. So when I do hit save, it's going to play back the audio while it bounces out. So it gives me the last chance to listen to it. Here we go. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat, no artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. And that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. There we go. So at this point, I'm pretty much done with Pro Tools. I bounce the audio I want out. Next thing I want to do is I will go up to File. I'm just going to hit Save one more time. I want to save before I close. And then I'm going to close the session. So a Pro Tool session, when you create a Pro Tool session, it generates a Pro Tool session folder. And here's the set, here's the Pro Tool session I, I created at the beginning, 52512 Goldfish. Within a Pro Tools session folder, you'll have a couple of icons. First of all, you'll have the Pro Tools file. The, think of the Pro Tools file as a frame you would put a picture in. It's the template. It's the edit window. And then it also generates an audio files folder. This is all the audio we recorded into Pro Tools today. This is the picture you would put into the frame. If I were to delete or lose the audio files folder, and then I would open up the Pro Tools the Pro Tools file, all that, all those waveforms that we saw in Pro Tools would just be gray blocks and you wouldn't hear them, they'd be gone. You, you, cannot, you cannot have one without the other. So always make sure that your, your, your PTF file or your Pro Tools file and your audio files folder are always together in, in your main folder, your, your root folder, your parent Pro Tools folder. And that's the great thing about Pro Tools, when, when, you, when you save a session, it automatically makes this folder for you and puts all these things together. So don't let these things get separated. Your audio files folder and your PTF folder. The session files backup folder, um, the great thing, other great thing about Pro Tools is as you're using Pro Tools, it will back up a session, um, it will back up every five minutes. So if you're recording something and you hit stop and you record the perfect take and you're working with it and you didn't press save, you know, always save, uh, and the power went out and you, you and Pro Tools got turned off, you might want to go into your session file backups and see if Pro Tools backed up uh, or saved the more recent session for you. Because if you open up this one, it might not have, the, have all the work you did in the last hour if you didn't hit save. But if you go into your session file backups, it might have saved it five minutes ago for you. I always want to make sure I archive my sessions, my Pro Tools sessions, because if if Goldfish calls me in a year and they say, "Hey, remember that that job you did for us back in May 25th, 2012?" 
yeah, I want you to open up that recording. I want you to send me that same exact recording, but I want you to put a new tag on it. Or we have a new flavor coming out next month, and I want you to tell us about it, but I still want you to use the audio. I could open up Pro Tools, and I could add things to it. If they wanted me to add music to it, I could, and I would do all that through my Pro Tools uh, session. But here's the final product. Here's the audio we bounced out. Here's the Pro. This is the 22512 Goldfish for Client. This is the WAV file. This is not unlike something you'd see in iTunes or your Windows Media Player. These goldfish crackers are natural, baked with real ingredients. Zero grams trans fat, no artificial preservatives. And there's one for every taste, because everyone's different. And that's only natural. Goldfish, the snack that smiles back. And you wouldn't know that that was edited, you know? You wouldn't know that I took the breaths out, even though I did. You wouldn't know that the, the tag is from a completely different take. You know, and that's the great thing. That's the great illusion about editing. You know, you can do you could do five takes and, and pick the best beginning of one, the best ending of another, the, the best middle of another, whatever. Maybe you have one sentence in a script that you just can't nail while you're doing the whole script. Maybe you just want to say that one sentence a few times in a row and edit that into your final product. That's it. That's what I would send my client. Um, so that's the basics of, of editing in Pro Tools. I hope this was helpful and, uh, and happy editing.